Sushruta for Neat is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. You are aware, humans are sexually reproducing and viviparous. You know, amongst mammalia, there are two categories of uh, mammals. Some mammals, very few, like uh, echidna, duckbed platypus, these are known to lay eggs, just like that of uh, birds. Majority of the mammals, they give birth to young one, and such animals are called viviparous. Human beings are we be parents and we reproduce only by sexual method. The reproductive events in humans include formation of gametes. Formation of gametes is known as gametogenesis. Formation of gametes, that is gametogenesis, that is sperms in males and ovum in females. So you must know that there are two processes here. That is the spermatogenesis which is concerned with the formation of male gametes. Male gametes are called the sperms. Male gametes are also called male sex cells. And these are what the female gamete have. The female gamete is called female sex cell or ovum. So formation gametes, that is uh, spermatogenesis and oogenesis, these two are together called gametogenesis. So the reproductive events in human in, humans include Formation of gametes by, by means of spermatogenesis in male and oogenesis in female, what is together known as gametogenesis. That is the production of sperms in males and ovum in females. The reproduction also involves transfer of sperms into the female genital tract. You can see uh, the sperms are moving in the female genital tract. What you see is the female reproductive system. You can see the sperms have moved here, right from the vaginal canal. It has moved to the uterus and it is going through the oviduct to reach the ovum. Yeah. So this is what the transfer forms into the female genital tract called insemination. Now, can you tell me, there is one more term, you know, there is one more term, what is called, there is one more term called, one minute. There is one more term called ejaculation. Can anyone tell me what is this uh, word means? Ejaculation and in what way this uh, term is uh, different from insemination? Dutti Gautama, what is the difference between the two? Ejaculation and insemination? Sir, if I, I don't know if it's correct. Ejaculation is like ejecting the sperm. Yeah. Yeah. Rakesh, yeah, you are right. Uh, insemination is getting the sperms into the transfer of sperms. Yeah, yeah. In. Transfer the sperms into the female reproductive tract. So if you look into this point, you know, now I hope you know very much. What is uh, the first cycle in a female cord? First cycle, menstrual cycle in female cord. What is the term? Diti? Sir, uh, like when it starts, it starts, it's called uh, menarch. Menarch and is called menopause. Menopause. And menopause men is the last one. Now, you may wonder whether such, uh, you know, the menarch is the first time the flow of blood along with unfertilized egg in the female. Am I right? Now, yes, if at all you just think in that way, is there any such incident in a male to take place where the first time the sperm gets ejaculated through the, through the, what you want? Is there any such a thing in case of a uh, uh, male? Right? Do you, you, yes, 
Now, you may be interested to know, is there any such incident to take place in male where the sperms or the salmon with the sperm is getting out? There is nothing like a male menarch. So, is it that uh, only in uh, female such incident is seen, not in male? Even in male, the first time when the salmon comes out, male, male also will be a little bit shocked or confused, just like uh, the female. So, whenever a male, whenever a boy attains sexual maturity, on one day, fine day, when he is in sleep, when he is in sleep, he starts getting some uh, uh, secretion, gelatinous secretion, and this gelatinous secretion is nothing but the salmon coming out for the first time. So such an incident even takes place when the male comes into the maturity. But it is not that every month it should get repeated. It may get repeated once in two, three, four months, or may not get repeated immediately like that. So anyhow, you come across here a word called menarch, that, uh, of course, and menopause in case of female. So this is what the sperms get to transport in the repetitive tract. Fusion of male and female gametes uh, takes place in a female repetitive tract, and it's called fertilization. <coughs> and this fertilization leads to the formation of zygote. <coughs> it leads to the formation of zygote. So, so this is what you have, the zygote, right? After it, what happens? Zygote undergoes the, the cleavage. The, this is for the formation. Zygote is followed by formation and a development of blastocyst. So this formation of a blastocyst from zygote is known as a cleavage. Cleavage it takes place. And this cleavage, cleavage of a zygote, what is cleavage? Cleavage is a repeated, rapid, mitotic division of the zygote. Repeated, rapid, mitotic division of the zygote is called cleavage. Understood? Repeated, rapid, mitotic division of the, of the, of the zygote is called cleavage. Right? Understood? So, by this, zygote gets uh, transformed into another structure called blastocyst. You can see uh, this is what a blastocyst you have. Blastocyst. And this blastocyst gets implanted in the uterus. It comes and gets attached to the wall of the uterus. And this is what is known as when the blastocyst comes and uh, gets embedded in the uterus, it is called implantation or uterine wall. Implantation. And this is followed by embryonic development or gestation. Gestation means pregnancy period. It is called pregnancy period. Once uh, one becomes a pregnancy, pregnant, you know, after about 280 days, she undergoes what is called parturition, delivers a baby. You can see uh, one particular doctor is doing this, uh, some uh, uh, cesarean delivery or something like that, and all the others are or looking at the uh, computer screen, monitor, to find out what he is doing. Because they can't see everything here, but they can properly see in on the monitor. Understood? Is it clear? Right? Follow? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You have learned that these repeat events occur after puberty. These uh, repeat events occur after puberty. Right? So, that means they occur after one attains a maturity. One minute, huh? just a minute.
I hope you are seeing this. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, you are hearing me properly. So, you know, at what age a girl attains puberty? Approximately. Duty, can you answer me? Sir, 13 to 14. 13 to 14, of course, that is uh, possible. And even a girl may attain puberty at the age of uh, 10 also. If at all one attains puberty at the at the 10 years, in case of a female, a male attains puberty, a male attains puberty at the age of 11. This is uh, as early as. And later, it depends. Now, let us look into further information. There are remarkable differences between repeat events in a male and in the female. For example, sperm formation continues even in old men, but the formation of ovum ceases in women around the age of 50 years. What does it mean? Even a man, till he goes to, to deathbed, or till the last minute of his life, sperm formation continues. But in case of female, the female, the formation of ovum gets uh, ended by the age of 50 years. And you know what we say? She has reached a... Jyoti, what we say? She has reached a... Menopause. Menopause. Okay. Now, you see here, what you see a grandpa and a, a grandchild. Am I right, Jyoti? Grandpa with a grandchild. Am I right? Yes, sir. But it is not true. This man is telling that it is his baby. Proud dad, Ramajit, he is telling, 94-year-old man, he is telling that the baby, he says, his son, not a grandson. So that is uh, the ability of uh, men to produce uh, even sperms or even to father at the age of 94. You may be knowing this person, who is says Rakesh Charlie Chaplin. You know, Charlie Chaplin used to make us to get into laughter by all his uh, comedian actor, but at the same time, you know, he at the age of 73, when uh, he, he was at, age, at the age of 73, when his youngest son Christopher was born. And uh, he had uh, 11 children, of course, with the four uh, wives. Okay, Charlie Chaplin. Leave it, just for your uh, information. Let us examine male and female reproductive system in humans now. The male reproductive system. The male reproductive system is located in the pelvis region. It is located in the pelvis region. Which is the pelvis region? Lower abdomen region is called pelvis region. Please remember, pelvis region is lower abdomen region. Lower abdomen region means the area which you have below your navel. Umbilicus, you know, below that, what do they tell? Kala Hote region. It includes a pair of testes along with the accessory ducts, glands, and external genitalia. And external genitalia. So, male reproductive includes a pair of testes, accessory ducts, additional ducts, glands. And external genitalia. External genitalia is nothing but the penis with the scrotum. Now let us see. This is what you have the diagonal sketch of uh, the male pelvis showing reproductive system. You must be in a position to rest, uh, just uh, uh, draw this if at all it is asked in the examination. Sometimes you'll be asked for four months question, five months question, write a beautiful labeled diagram of diagram of the male reproductive system. So you can just you can just have this diagram like that. First, you write that there is urine bladder, urine bladder, urine bladder, and that is from that is a duct. You can show this duct. And you can write just below that, you can write another one. There's a prostate gland. Okay. So you get the duct here and this duct comes down. And this duct continues as the urethra inside the inside the inside the penis okay but prior to that it gets uh, joined 
joined by another dot coming here, another dot comes here, and this dot joins here, this one, the urethrid joins. But prior to that, prior to that joining, of course, this what it joins is that another dot comes, another dot comes, and this dot actually joins this. Yeah, but uh, prior to that, it also gets joined by what is called uh, the seminosca, right? So this you have to bring down, bring down. And here you have to show the testes. And this uh, dot. It comes from here you have what is called epidemis. Right? Like this. And this is what you have the penis. You can show glance penis. Right coming down. Open here. Right? Then you can write the, the abdomen. Like this. Simple it is. Not that you have to worry much. And what you want is that to urethra. We want, we want this. Uh, what difference? Okay. Semi-skull. That is. So in this way, simply you write the diagram. That's all. And here you have to show. Yes, okay. Right. Understood? Okay. Is it followed? Hello. Yes, sir. Are you there? Yeah. So you just learn to write this diagram. Okay. Now the testes are situated outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch called scrotum, right? There is a scrotum, it is a single pouch, scrotum. The scrotum helps in maintaining low temperature. You know, always the temperature is uh, around 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade, lesser than normal internal temperature necessary for spermatogenesis. That is a uh, 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade low than the normal body temperature. Understood? Clear? Always ask a question. Why it is less? For permitogenesis, the temperature should be less. Right? And in order to see that the temperature is lower than the body temperature, the testes are placed away from the body in the scrotum. I hope you followed. Right? In some animals, in some animals, if you see, is there anyone has come waiting? Can you make it out? Whether you see that there is anyone waiting? Sir, someone has entered. Enter. Okay. Right. So now we shall continue with uh, this. Uh, I hope you are seeing. Yes, are you seeing? yes, sir. Yeah. So you know, in some animals, the testes is uh, inside the body. In case of human beings, the testes is outside. There are some animals where the testis is inside the body. Do you know which animal? This animal you have seen in your day-to-day -day life. Can you give me an example? Where the testis is uh, inside the body. Inside. Right? No. You make it a point. You just uh, see whenever it is possible, whenever you come across the male elephant. Male elephant. In elephants, testes in elephants, testes is said to be intra abdominal. Intra abdominal means inside the abdomen. 
इंट्रा एबडोमिनल ई सेड एबडोमिन राइट इन बैट आल्सो इट इज इंट्रा एबडोमिनल ओनली ड्यूरिंग द ब्रीडिंग सीजन इट कम्स आउट इन वेस आल्सो इट इज इंट्रा एबडोमिनल वेस आल्सो इट इज इंट्रा एबडोमिनल आर यू फॉलोइंग मी सर सर मी the testis is formed inside i mean yeah yes yeah. sir okay if you look into the elephant you you will not see elephant will be having possess very big penis there will not be any testis near by that no there is no testis testis is present inside the abdomen of the elephant it is also true we have got whales bats etc right now this is uh, another picture showing the same i don't want you to waste your time in adults each testis is oval in shape very important point with a length of about 4 to 5 cm and width of about 2 to 3 cm length of about 4 to 5 cm width of about 2 to 3 cm right this is what most important the measurement of uh, the length and width of the testis oval in shape the testis is covered by dense covering in lcd book they simply say dense covering they do not say what are this dense covering called let us see that okay so look here the testis is covered by a covering called you can note down the covering called tunica vaginalis it is a serous layer fluid filled layer serous layer it is filled with the fluid okay another one is tunica albuginea these are the two coverings that you come across around the testis in your ncert book they have just they have just mentioned there are testis is covered by dense covering so you write down what are these two dense covering one is a tunica tunica means a cover tunica albuginea and tunica vaginalis right so these are the two layers now each testis has about 250 compartments this is also very important 250 number 250 compartments called testicular lobules testicular lobules so sir sir can you show the previous uh, previous one sir i want yes. to write tunica albuginea tunica yes. vaginalis okay is to what did you yes sir yes i done rakesh you want to ask something so no sir sir each, each test is as about to 250 compartments each and these compartments what you come across we call them testicular lobules remember lobe is the partition of one of the one liver is a three lobed or two lobed Each lobe further is divided into smaller structures called lobules. Tube is divided into further smaller structures called tubule. Right? Canal is further divided into form small structures called canalicule, tubule, ductule, lobule. Okay. If you look into each of these lobules, each lobule contains one, two, three. Highly coiled seminiferous tubules. Each lobule contains one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules in which sperms are produced. Sperms are produced in this seminiferous tubule. Right? Look here. This is what you have. This is what you have. The seminiferous tubule. In each lobule, in each lobule, this is. Uh, one side you can see there are many more there in each lobule you say you have already seen there are 250 lobules in each lobule you come across to two to three or one to three seminiferous tubules and this seminiferous tubule each of these seminiferous tubules the sperms are produced what you see here this is one seminiferous tubule this is another one and you see this is one more like that there are many seminiferous tubules Inside the seminiferous tubule, you see the sperms are produced. You can see different stages of germ cells. Each seminiferous tubule is lined by 
two types of cells. There are two types of cells, and these are called male germ cells, also known as spermatogonia and Sertoli cells. I'll show that. There are two types of cells inside each seminiferous tibia. And these two types of cells are called male germ cells, also known as spermatogonia and Sertoli cells. Okay, look here. This is what you have the male germ cells. All these are male germ cells, and these are called spermatogonia plural, spermatogonium singular. And this is what somewhat uh, spindle shaped cell, and this is called Sertoli cell. Sertoli cell. So there are two types of cells. One is uh, spermatogonia, these are all spermatogonia, and another one is a uh, Sertoli cell. And you must know that male germ cells of spermatogonia are concerned with the production of sperms. Sperms and Sertoli cells are also called by another name, nurse cell. It is also called by another name, nurse cell. Sertoli cells, nurse cells, or they are also called by one more name, sus tentacular cells. Sus tentacular cells means the cells which are concerned with the which are concerned with the nourishing of the nourishing of the growing germ cells. I hope it is clear. You see, there are two types of cells. One is a male germ cells, also called spermatogonia, and another is a Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells are also called nurse cells, which are concerned with the nourishing of uh, nourishing, providing food, nourishing of uh, nourishing of uh, the growing uh, growing uh, germ cells. Growing germ cells, I will tell you, which are all growing germ cells. Growing germ cells, including the spermatozoa. Nurse cells are also called sustentacular cells. Right? Look here. This is the nurse cell or Sertoli cell or, or the, the uh, what is that? Sustentacular cells. Right? So, the male germ cells undergo meiotic division. Of course, the male germ cells undergo, at first, undergo, at first, at first, mitotic division, at first, mitotic, and later, and later, meiotic division. Undergo first mitotic division, and later, meiotic divisions, finally leading to sperm formation. Well, Sertoli cells provide nutrition to the germ cells. Okay? Now, the regions outside the seminiferous tubule called, called, tubules called interstitial spaces contain small blood vessels and interstitial or leading cells. The regions outside the seminiferous tubule, outside the seminiferous tubule is called, the region outside the seminiferous tubules are called interstitial spaces. And in these interstitial spaces, you come across the small blood vessels. And also interstitial cell space with the cell, interstitial cell or leading cells. Now let us see them. Look here. This is what? One seminiferous tubule. This is another seminiferous tubule. One more seminiferous tubule. And the space you come across, this space is called interstitium. Cells that are present here, they are called interstitial cells. Interstitial cells are also called interstitial cells are also called leading cells. Okay, look here. This is the one of the seminiferous tubules, one of the seminiferous tubules with all the spermatogonia, 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 this is spermatogonia with the middle somewhat uh, sertoli cell and this is another and this space is called interstitium. And this interstitium, you come across interstitial cells or others called leading cells. And these leading cells, you will study later, they produce a male hormone testosterone. Right? Leading cells synthesize and secrete testicular hormones called androgens in general. Specifically, you come across what is called a testosterone. So, apart from this, the interstitium also contains immunologically competent cells. Immunologically competent cells are the cells which play an important role in the immune system. The, apart from this, the male cell, not whatever you have studied, you have studied about uh, the primary sex organ. If at all you are asked, what is the primary sex organ in case of a male, 
answer is a male gonad primary sex organ in male is a male gonad male gonad is otherwise called testis male gonad is otherwise called testis is otherwise called testis okay so the male sex sex now we have completed the study of a male primary sex organ or male gonad or testis now associated with the testis we have male sex accessory ducts additional ducts in association with testis and these include rete testis vas afferentia epididymis and vas deferens all these are present these are all part and parcel of the male sex accessory ducts male sex accessory ducts right now let us see them this is what you have the testis and along with the testis you come across associated testis secondary male male accessory ducts male sex accessory ducts and these include rete testis what you have here and you do come across vas afferentia and this vas afferentia lead to that of the vas deferens sorry epididymis and this epididymis lead to that of the vas deferens this is a epididymis enter what is epididymis epididymis continues as the vas deferens or ductus deferens let me show that here the seminiferous tubule all these are seminiferous tubule what will come across inside the seminiferous tubules of the testis open into vas afferentia to rete testis so these are seminiferous tubules first open into rete testis this what you come across here this role rete testis seminiferous tubules open into rete testis rete testis these rete testis they open into vas afferentia vas afferentia rete testis open into vas afferentia vas afferentia lead to the epididymis epididymis so seminiferous tubules of the testis open into the vas afferentia through rete testis right the vas afferentia vas afferentia leave the testis vas afferentia leave the testis they come out they leave the testis and open into epididymis epididymis open into epididymis this is the epididymis open into epididymis located along the posterior surface of each testis if at all a man is standing this is the anterior surface he is standing facing you this is the anterior surface of the testis and the posterior surface of the testis on the posterior surface of the testis we come across epididymis we come across epididymis right epididymis this is epididymis so if you look at epididymis so you see that in epididymis we come across three parts and these three parts are in the epididymis these three parts are generally we call it uh, we call it uh, here you can see here, this is a head of epididymis this is the head part and this is the body of epididymis and this is called tail of epididymis okay so this is called cauda epididymis that is caudal part cauda cauda okay so we have caudal epididymis and uh, body of epididymis and caput epididymis caput epididymis is the tail is the head part is the head part of the epididymis caput epididymis c a p u t right so caput epididymis so you have here the tail epididymis the body of epididymis this is the body of epididymis this is the caudal part of the epididymis and this is the head part of the epididymis and it's called the caput epididymis caput c a p u t caput means head of the epididymis cauda means tail of the epididymis caudal cauda epididymis right okay now yeah the epididymis epididymis leads to see the epididymis leads to a duct and this duct is called vas deferens vas deferens vas deferens is also called ductus deferens d u c t u s ductus deferens vas deferens so epididymis leads to vas deferens that ascends it comes up that ascends to the abdomen and loops over the and loops over the urinary bladder this is the urinary bladder urinary bladder this structure is urinary bladder what is this urinary bladder 
it loops over the urinary bladder, urinary bladder. So what is this? The wash difference comes up, loops over the urinary bladder. Then after looping over the urinary bladder, it receives a duct from seminal vesicle. It receives a duct from seminal vesicle. So it receives a duct from seminal vesicle and opens into urethra, opens into this urethra, coming out from the urinary bladder. It opens into urethra as the ejaculatory duct. You can see uh, whenever wash difference, there's a wash difference, joins the duct from the semi-vesical, it forms a common duct. This duct is called ejaculatory duct. Ejaculatory duct later joins with the urethra coming from the urine bladder. It receives a duct from semi-vesical and opens into urethra as the ejaculatory duct. And ejaculatory duct joins the urethra and this urethra runs along the penis and opens to the outside means of urethral meters. Okay, look here. These ducts, which are these ducts? These ducts, right from epidermis, the wash difference. Okay, these ducts store and transport the sperms from the testes to the outside to the urethra. We have already heard about this that uh, male sex uh, accessory ducts. Male sex accessory ducts include rete testes, vas efferentia, epidermis, vas difference. All these ducts are stored and transport sperms from the testes to the outside through urethra. The urethra originates from urinary bladder. Urethra originates from urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder. And extends to the penis to its uh, external opening. This external opening is called urethral meters. Meters means aperture. Urethral meters. Aperture of the aperture of the urethra. Urethral meters. So, the same diagram, you can see here. Uh, this is what uh, the epidermis runs as uh, wash difference, loops over, loops over the urine bladder, releases the duct from uh, the Seminuscle forms what is called ejaculated duct. Ejaculated duct joins the duct coming from the urine bladder urethra, and this urethra runs to the penis, opens the outside by means of uh, the urethral meters. At the same time, now we have to look into the glands associated with this. The penis is the male external genitalia. If it only ask her, what is the external genitalia? Male external genitalia is called penis. It is not that male primary sex organ is a penis. Male primary sex organ is the gonad, male gonad testis. So penis, penis is a male external genitalia and it is made up of special tissues. It is made up of special tissues and these Sorry, it is uh, made up of. Uh, are you seeing this? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, penis is the male external genitalia. Yeah? It is made up of special tissue that helps in the erection of the penis and to facilitate insemination. So, you must know that for the penis to be introduced into the vagina, you should get uh, erected. The penis uh, should become straight, it becomes uh, very much uh, solid. Unless it becomes hard, such a penis cannot be introduced into the vagina. So, for that, the penis is made up of a special tissue that helps in erection. It is raising up. Generally, the human penis will be just uh, limping down. Whenever a male gets sexually excited, his penis becomes straight, it becomes solid enough, and so has to be introduced into the vagina. So erection is required, and after the erection, after it is introduced into the vagina, the insemination has to take place. For that, contraction of the muscles of the penis should take place, and that facilitates insemination. So what are these uh, special tissues? You must know that there are two types of special tissue. You can note down here the erection is brought in. 
with the help of corpora cavernosa erection and the contraction and insemination is brought in with the help of corpus spongiosum okay there are two types of muscle please note down so erection is because of the tissue called corpora cavernosa corpora cavernosa brings about erection of the penis corpus spongiosum enables the insemination by opening the urethral meatus otherwise urethral meatus or urethral orifice will be always closed it will get open only when the urine comes out during all other time urethral orifice is supposed to remain closed but during this uh, intercourse it gets open because of the contraction of this uh, corpus spongiosum corpus spongiosum therefore brings about opening of the urethral meatus and also insemination i hope it is clear it is clear and right so the enlarged end of a penis the tip of the penis is called glans penis this part is called glans penis which is covered by a loose fold of skin called foreskin foreskin or it is also called prefuse foreskin or prefuse foreskin or prefuse the first skin this is what you have the foreskin this is the glans penis is covered by a loose fold of skin called foreskin right now coming to the male accessory glands the male accessory addition glands in code paired seminal vesicle this is what you have it is a paired there are two in number paired seminal vesicles and a prostate gland it is always a single remember prostate gland is always one in number prostate gland and a paired bulbourethral gland this is what you have bulbourethral gland remember the seminal vesicle is a two in number prostate gland is one in number and bulbourethral glands are two in number sometimes you are asked a question which gland is a single seminal vesicle prostate gland bulbourethral gland all of this answer is prostate gland is always one in number so bulbourethral gland paired seminal vesicles prostate gland bulbourethral gland you know seminal vesicle is mainly concerned with the secretion of or formation of semen yeah prostate gland is concerned with the secretion of what is called alkaline fluid alkaline fluid and this alkaline fluid it nullifies the acidic fluid of the vagina inside the vagina there is a fluid vaginal fluid and vaginal fluid is always acidic if the sperm enter the acidic fluid they get killed so in order to weaken that acidic fluid or nullify the effect of acidic fluid the prostate gland helps it secretes alkaline fluid and bulbourethral gland is also known as a corpus gland the bulbourethral gland or corpus gland corpus gland always uh, produce a certain lubricant lubricant and this lubricant uh, gets applied on the penis surface of the penis makes the penis to enter into the vagina without getting harm itself or without getting damage itself or without getting any damage to the vagina so whenever the penis is introduced into the vagina penis should pass through the vagina smoothly and come out and also it should not damage the vagina vaginal canal and this is possible because of this gland that is what is known as bulbourethral gland or corpus gland many times whenever a boy gets sexually excited from the tip of his penis some fluid comes out and generally boys mistake that it is a semen that has come out no it is not a semen it is a secretion of this bulbourethral gland or corpus gland right okay secretions of these glands what have you heard about now this gland which in called paired seminal vesicles prostate gland and bulbourethral gland the secretion of these glands constitute seminal plasma which is rich in fructose calcium and certain enzymes rich in fructose calcium and certain enzymes the secretions of bulbourethral glands also helps in the lubrication of the penis right clear so that's all about the male reproductive system now it is the time for you to ask me the doubts
Any doubt? Sir, seminal plasma is made up of uh, calcium and certain enzymes. Of course, oh. this enzyme enzymes uh, are different. I, I should tell you, in case of human beings, the enzyme, one of the most famous enzyme, important enzyme is uh, hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase, I'll tell you what is the role of this later. Hyaluronidase is one of the enzymes. And uh, uh, apart from that, there will be many mm, enzymes uh, produced by the uh, sperm head. Later, I'll tell you about that. Okay, but here, seminoplasma is rich with the sugar fructose, the calcium, and there's also one more chemical in this, if you at all you want, it is called prostaglandin. There is one more chemical called prostaglandin. Okay. Clear? Any other doubt? No, sir. Rakesh? No, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Right. Now let us look into. I hope you are seeing. See this line? Yes, sir. Female reproductive system. The female reproductive system consists of what all? The female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries. Along with a pair of ovaries, this is what ovary have. A pair of oviducts, this is the oviduct, this is the oviduct, right, this one, oviduct, then uterus, this is what you have, uterus, this is the structure, pear shepherd, cervix, lower part of the uterus, is always called cervix, vagina, this all structure together called vagina, and external genitalia located in the pelvic region. So these are the parts of female reproductive system. A female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries with a pair of oviders, uterus, cervix, vagina, and external genitalia. And all these are present in the pelvic region. This is what? This is what? Pelvic region. And we call this as well as a lower abdominal region. This is a water diagram sketch of the female reproductive system. This is also asked in the examination to write a neat labor diagram. So what do you write? First you write one uh, urine bladder like this. Okay, let there be an opening. And just out of that you write one more. Right? Label that uh, first part as uterus, next part as cervix, and it's vagina canal, and let it have the opening. Okay. So these two, they lead to what is known as genitalia, female genitalia. Okay. Or you can also have the another diagram. I will tell you later. These parts, what have you heard about? Ovaries, oviduct, uterus, cervix, vagina, etc. These parts of the system, female reproductive system, along with a pair of mammary glands, are integrated structurally and functionally to support the process of ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, birth, and child care. Look here. The main reproductive system is concerned with only the production of this semen, sperm. Semen is the sperm. That's all. And once this uh, semen is uh, in introduced into the female genital system, the work of male reproductive system is over. But remember, so, male reproductive system is concerned with the production of the sperm and insemination. Female reproductive system has so much, many responsibilities. It is concerned with the process of ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, birth, and child care. So many responsibilities are there on the female reproductive system. When compared to this, the work of male reproductive system is negligible. Ovaries are the primary female sex organ. I've said the testes are primary male sex organs. And 
ovaries are the fem primary female sex organs that produce the female gamete ova and several steroid hormones steroid hormones even testosterone is also steroid hormone several steroid hormones what is called ovarian hormone and you know the most important steroid hormones produced by the female reproductive system is one is that of the estrogen and another one is that of the progesterone estrogen and progesterone these are the two important hormones produced by the female reproductive system ovarian hormones they are together called the ovaries are located ovaries are located this is what ovary have the ovaries are located one on each side one on each side of the lower abdomen this is what you have this is the lower abdomen one on each side you come across the ovary to be situated right now each ovary each ovary is about 2 to 4 cm in length 2 to 4 cm in length and is connected 2 to 4 cm length and is connected to the pelvic wall that is what pelvic wall you have pelvic wall and uterus this uterus so it is connected to the pelvic wall and the uterus by means of ligaments so in the ancient book they just say about the ligaments now you must know what are the different types of ligaments we have so ligaments ligaments are the membranes structure which connect the ovary either with the wall pelvic wall is the lower abdominal wall and with it is there are three types of ligaments one type of ligament is called broad ligament another ligament is called suspensory ligament and the third type of ligament is called utero ovarian ligament there are three types of ligaments broad ligament suspensory ligament and utero ovarian ligament okay so this is what a broad ligament you have you can see that a broad ligament connects this ovary with the uterus on one side with the pelvic wall on the other side and also with the fallopian tube right it is important to know suspensory ligament is a, is a highly vascular it is vascular it has a blood vessels whatever the blood is supplied to the ovary it comes to the suspensory ligament it is vascular and a nervous layer with the nerve supply okay suspensory ligament and one more ligament that you come across is the utero ovary ligament which connects the, the ovary with the uterus utero ovary ligament so you have at one side of the ovary utero ovary ligament at the other side of ovary you come across suspensory ligament both the suspensory ligament and utero ovary ligament are are the part and parcel of a broad ligament i hope you have understood these three ligaments you just remember these the names of these three ligaments and also remember that well, that a suspensory ligament is a vascular okay now let us continue each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium a thin epithelium this is what you have the epithelium thin epithelium this okay it is just like this thin epithelium and you must know this epithelium thin epithelium whatever you come across around the gonad around gonad this epithelium is called germinal epithelium and this germinal epithelium is present in the testis also the epithelial tissue is called germinal epithelium and this germinal epithelium is made up of germinal epithelium is made up of cuboid cells always ask in the examination cuboid cells cuboid cells okay now let me just take you back to the testes look here if you look into the see this is what you have the testes see all these are cube like cells am i right cube like cells and this cube like cells what you have these cube like cells these are all all together called what is known as germinal epithelium i said germinal epithelium because it is epithelium found inside the gonad it is called germinal epithelium and this uh, cells from uh, germ cells later germinal epithelium and i said it is nothing but modified it is nothing but modified cuboidal epithelium modified cuboidal epithelium like this you are inside the ovary also you have germinal epithelium with the 
modified q by it says i hope you understand my point right right hello yes sir, yes sir. Yeah. so we have here we have here yeah this is what i i've said the epithelium is here if it is see see this all cuboidal epithelial cells forming the germinal epithelium each ore is covered by a thin epithelium which encloses ovarian stroma this whatever structure you have inside inside your ovary is such ovarian stroma and this ovarian stroma is divided into two zones a peripheral one this what peripheral you are peripheral one is always referred as cortex and the middle one central one this is always referred as medulla inner one medulla outer one is the peripheral one is a is called cortex coming to the oviducts the coming to the other that is what is known as a female accessory duct or female sex accessory duct the oviducts also known as a fallopian tube also known as uterine ducts uterine ducts uterine ducts so the oviducts fallopian tubes uterus and vagina constitute the female accessory ducts all these together constitute female accessory ducts female accessory ducts which are all oviducts uterus and vagina let us see that see here. each fallopian tube what is the other name oviduct or uterine duct each fallopian tube this is the fallopian tube this is the fallopian tube each fallopian tube is about to 10 to 12 cm long important you must know the length 10 to 12 cm long and extends from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus extends from the periphery this is the ovary periphery from the from the periphery periphery extends from the periphery of the ovary to the uterus this is the uterus the part closer to the ovary is the funnel shaped infundibula this is what you funnel shaped one funnel shaped one this the funnel shaped one is called infundibula right so you have here close to the uterus is the isthmus once it was asked which part of the oviduct is close to the uterus you must know that the part which is close to the uterus is called isthmus which is very narrow and the part which is close to the ovary is called infundibulum which is funnel like so each fallopian tube is about 10 to 12 cm long extends from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus the part closer to the ovary is a funnel shaped infundibulum the edges of the infundibulum edges of the infundibulum this infundibulum edges of the infundibulum bears possesses finger like projections called fimbriae finger like projections called fimbriae which help in collection of the ovum after ovulation so these finger like structures what you will see the finger like structures they form part of the infundibulum and these collect the ovum after ovulation so edges of the infundibulum for the finger like projections called fimbriae which help in collection of the ovum after ovulation. The infundibulum leads to a wider part of the oviduct called ampulla. So this is the wider part. Wider part of the oviduct, oviduct, wider part of the oviduct called ampulla. Ampulla leads to narrow part of the oviduct called isthmus. The last part of the oviduct, this is the last part of the oviduct, is the isthmus which has a narrow lumen and it joins the uterus. So we have studied the structure of the ovary. We have now studied the structure of the oviduct or fallopian tube. This is the diagram sketch. You can see this infundibulum with the finger like structure called fimbria, which catches the ova, whatever that comes out of the ovary, and infundibulum leads to the wider lumen ampulla. Wider lumen ampulla leads to the narrow lumen isthmus. And this must join the uterus. This also, this diagram sketch of the female reproductive system is also asked to be written in the annual exam. 
or it may be asked to uh, correctly label, labeled or for a correct labeling in the NEET or CT exams. The UTS is a single. This is a peer-shaped UTS. Pair, peer-shaped UTS. The uterus is a single and it is also called womb. The shape of the uterus is like inverted pear. This is an inverted pear like structure. Uterus is supported by ligaments. Always I have already have mentioned about that. Attached to the pellicle. We have already seen broad ligament, suspensory ligament, and utero ovarian ligaments. The uterus, this uterus, uterus opens into vagina. This part is called vagina, also sometimes called vaginal canal, and the lower part of the uterus is called cervix. Remember, cervix is the lower part of the uterus. It is the part of the uterus. It is not a separate structure. It is a part of the uterus or lower part of the uterus is called cervix. And cervix opens into the next part called vagina. Right? So, this is uterus here. And this part is what you have narrow part is the cervix. And that opens to the outside by means of vagina. The cavity of the cervix is called a cervical canal. Which uh, along with the vagina forms a birth canal. All is important. Cervical canal with vagina forms a birth canal. Many times what we do is that we refer this the cervix. Inside is the cervical canal. And the cervix leads to a part. It is a somewhat of a tubular structure like this part. And this opens by means of uh, an aperture. So what is called this part, this is called a cervix. And this, is, this part is called vaginal it is called vaginal canal. And this vaginal canal opens to the outside and this opening of the vaginal canal is known as a vaginal orifice. Orifice means so aperture. Vaginal orifice, opening. Vaginal orifice. So, cervical canal along with the vaginal canal, it forms a birth canal. Right? Birth canal. The wall of the uterus now, you are looking into the details of the uterus structure. The very important again, separately for three to four months question. The wall of the uterus has three layers of tissues. The external thin membrane is a perimetrium. External thin membrane is layer called a perimetrium, which is a protective layer. Middle thick layer of a smooth muscle, always called myometrium. Myo refers to muscle, myometrium, and inner glandular layer, inner glandular layer, and this inner glandular layer is called endometrium, endometrium. So, you must know that the uterus is made up of three layers. Outermost is the perimetrium, it is a membranous, and it is protective layer. Middle one is a myometrium, it is formed of a smooth muscle, it is a thick layer, it is in here it is a thin layer, external thin layer. Middle one is a thick layer made up of a smooth muscle and it is uh, called a myometrium, the contraction which uh, helps in uh, the parturition. And innermost layer is a glandular layer. And this layer is called endometrium that lines uh, uterine cavity. Uterine cavity. This is a uterus cavity called uterine cavity. Cavity of the uterus is called uterine cavity. Uterine cavity is aligned by Lined by endometrium, a glandular layer. It is a glandular layer. Very important point you must remember. The endometrium, whatever you have seen this endometrium, this endometrium, the endometrium, the endometrium, this layer, the endometrium, it undergoes, undergoes a periodic change. The endometrium undergoes a cyclical change. Yes. Look here. This uh, diagram represents uh, what you see here, this endometrium. See the thickness of endometrium here. See the thickness here. See the thickness here. And see the rupturing of the endometrium here. So, the endometrium undergoes the cyclical changes during menstrual cycle while the myometrium exhibits a strong contraction during delivery of the baby. We shall see how that uh, cyclical changes takes place in endometrium later. But for your information, endometrium undergoes the cyclical changes during menstrual cycle. And myometrium exhibits contraction we are resulting in the delivery of the baby. Now let us look into the female external genitalia. 
The female external genitalia in course, this is what your female external genitalia. The female external genitalia in course, mons pubis, this part, sorry, this part, upper part, mons pubis, labia majora, this is very much a prominent part, labia majora, just inner to that, the aligning part, aligning part, labia minora, then you have a transparent, the, then you have a membrane surrounding this uh, vagina, hymen, and you have to come across some peanut like structure called clitoris. All this we are going to study in detail, but remember the female external genitalia, it go to mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, hymen, and clitoris. Okay, look here. The mons pubis is this is what the mons pubis of the female genitalia. Mons pubis is a cushion of a fatty tissue. So it will be always raised. Fish of a fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair. You know, there will be always a small hair around the genitalia, and that hair is always called pubic hair. The labia majora, so this is a mons pubis. This mons pubis extends, see, it extends downward, it extends downward, mons pubis extends downward as labia majora or fleshy force of tissue which extend down from the mons pubis. So from the mons pubis, fleshy force of tissue extend down and this is called uh, labia majora. And uh, surround, uh, surround the vaginal opening. This is labia majora. It actually surrounds the, surrounds the vaginal opening, vaginal opening, right? The labia minora are paired force of tissue under labia majora. So if you see that uh, this is uh, labia majora, labia majora, yet in to that a lining, in to that a lining is labia minora. Labia minora is a lining. Suppose I write that this is the, this is the uh, pubis, this is the pubis, pubis extends downward as uh, that of uh, the labia majora, labia majora. If, the, if this is the labia majora, whatever I have written here, now you just imagine inside this uh, labia majora, a lining. This uh, lining, whatever you come across inside the labia majora, is uh, the labia minora, here you come across vagina, here you come across uh, the uh, urethermitis, and here you come across the clitoris. So this is what you have, the clitoris, and this is uh, the opening of the urethra, urethral orifice, and this is the vagina, right? So most pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair. The labia majora are the fleshy force of tissue which extend down from the most pubis and surround the vaginal opening. The labia minora, labia minora, this is what I said, are paired force of tissue under labia majora, right? The opening of the vagina, so this is the vagina, Opening the vagina is often covered by partially, often covered partially by membrane called hymen. So suppose there is a vaginal opening like this. So this is a partially, partially, partially covered by a membrane. And this a partially covered membrane, if I say that with the opening little bit, little bit of opening there. So let us say that this is a partially covered edge with the little bit opening. This particular structure is called hymen. So, opening of the vagina is often covered partially by a membrane called hymen. Then, you do come across, just above that, you come across, you come across a peanut -like structure. Clitoris is a tiny finger-like structure which uh, lies at the upper junction. It is a, it is a finger-like structure. Clitoris is a very tiny finger-like structure which lies at the upper junction of the two labia majora. You know, these are the two labia majora. Labia majora. Above the urethral meters. Urethral meters is opening of urethra, which helps in the passing of only urine. Vagina is helping in the passing of menstrual flow every month after one girl gets menar. So, clitoris is a very tiny finger structure which lies at the upper junction of the two labia majora. Above the urethral opening. Urethral opening is also called urethral meters. You can see here, eh, this is what covering here, the vagina here. And a little bit of a small opening is left. And uh, here, above you to come across uh, the urethral opening, and it is a clitoris, right? The same thing is shown in another diagram. You can see uh, this is uh, what a mons pubis part. 
and is the labia majora, labia majora, and you do have labia minor here. And here you come across vaginal opening, and is a urethromitus, and here is the clitoris, right? The hymen is often torn, that is a cover, what you come across uh, surrounding the vagina, is often torn during the first coitus. First coitus is intercourse. So, you know, coitus, intercourse, mating, mating, copulation, all these four words mean same. Four words meaning same. It is coming sexually in contact with each other. So, if the hymen is often torn out during the first coitus, what you what say? Intercourse. What you say during the first night after marriage? Intercourse. However, it can also be broken by a sudden fall or jolt or insertion of a vaginal tampon. This is a vaginal tampon. Or active participation in some sports like horseback riding, cycling, etc. So, nowadays, most of the girls get their hymen torn out because of the different activities that they perform. So, in some women, the hymen persists even after coitus. That much hard it will be. It will persist. In fact, the presence or absence of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity or sexual experience. If you know we come across an uh, intact hymen without any rupture, you cannot say that there's a very virgin woman. Or if at all the hymen is already torn out, you cannot say that that woman has already some sexual experience. No. So, hymen has to do nothing with the, the sexual experience of any particular individual in general. Otherwise, generally, hymen, if it is in contact, if it is intact, during this uh, first night, when the penis is introduced, it gets a starting rupture. Right? Now, another important part with the female reproductive system is the functional memory gland. Functional memory gland means working memory gland. You do come across some sort of a gland in case of male also, but it is not functional in male. In female, it is a functional memory gland. It is characteristic of all female mammals. The memory glands are parent structure. We call them breast that contain granular tissue and variable amount of fat. Depending upon the amount of fat, some of the women will get a big breast, some of the women will get a small breast. So, this is because of the deposition of the fat around the breast. The granular tissue of each breast is divided into 15 to 20 mammary lobes. As I told you, the one big gland is divided into a small, smaller lobe. It is called a lobes, mammary lobe, containing cluster of cells called alveoli. Let us see that. So, here you see all whatever you see here, these are all sacral structures. These sacral structures are called alveoli. alveoli. And these alveoli, alveoli are filled with the milk, not with the air, as you see in case of lungs. Alveoli. Now, if the cells of alveoli, whatever this alveoli is there, it is somewhat like this, some alveoli. The cells of the alveoli, whatever the cells you come across in the alveoli, they produce their secret milk. The cells of alveoli secret milk, which is stored in the cavities here. It is stored in cavities. Okay. The alveoli open, they open by means open into mammary tubules. They open the mammary tubules. Alveoli open into mammary tubules. And the tubules of each lobe, there are many mammary tubules. You can see another mammary tubule like that. One more mammary tubule like that. So, these are all memory tubules. The alveoli open into a memory tubule. The tubules of each loop joint form memory duct. All these joint form memory duct. Memory duct. We can see that this is a memory duct. So, alveoli, memory alveoli lead to memory tubules, minor test tube. Tubules, minor test memory tubules joint form memory duct. Several such a memory duct. This is one memory duct. Several such a memory duct. Again, you can see that. Several such a memory diet, several such a memory diet, memory diet, memory diet, join memory diet, several such memory diet join to form wider memory ampulla. You see here, memory ampulla, wider memory ampulla. So, first one is uh, memory alveolus, alveolus lead to the um, tubules, tubules lead to memory diet, 
memory duct to open to ampulla and this ampulla is connected to lactiferous duct through which milk is sucked out ludicomacus lactiferous duct through which milk is released out or sucked out very very important diagram also explanation also you must know about the details of this right okay any doubt on this 